Hallelujah. Let's get into the word. Let's get into the word. Let's get into the word. Um, let's go to Psalms 30. Psalm 30. I'm going to read into your hearing verses 1 through 5. And just stick around to see how this thing evolves and unveils itself. Now, Psalms 30, Psalm 30, 1 through 5, a psalm and song at the dedication of the house of David. Somebody say his new place. Mm -hmm. He says it like this. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up. And has made my foes to rejoice. Thou, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive. Let me say that again. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. And, O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Thou hast healed me. Thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. I could literally preach a sermon right there. Give thanks. Thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. He ain't even doing nothing right now according to some of us. You, you breathing while you saying God ain't moving, by the way. You breathing while you saying God ain't moving. And it says give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. So if you can remember anything that God did for you, you ought to be giving thanks. For his anger endured but a moment. In his favor is life. Here's the part that we all familiar with. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy. Somebody say, but joy. <laughs> Somebody say, but joy. I know you're in the struggle right now. I say, but joy. I know everything ain't what you want it to be. Say, but joy. I know you got some ailments in your body right now. Say, but joy. I know you got some financial issues. Say, but joy. <laughs> I know your family acting crazy right now. Say, but joy. <laughs> I know you want some things that you have not received quite yet say but joy I know somebody you've been ministering to for years and they still ain't called to say but joy I know your children acting out in school say but joy <laughs> but joy come in the morning the morning is a set time. <laughs> oh, Lord. The morning is a set time. Somebody say, but joy. Take y'all seats. Weeping is often the result of heartache and heartbreak, grief and loss. We agree. Most of the time when you cry, it's because you've lost something. Or you're grieving something or something is bothering you. Now I know that tears of joy, but we ain't dealing with that. I'm tears of joy, that ain't weeping. Weeping comes from a place of agony, pain, distress. It comes from a place of loss. But sometimes, sometimes it's a prerequisite for something else to happen. Sometimes what it's really doing is, is allowing something to take place in you so that what's been going on in you comes out of you. This is why I don't understand the whole misnomer of holding back your tears for what? They were given to you for a reason. Amen. If you knew how to sow your tears, you would understand what you would reap. Because they that sow in tears reap in. Uh, okay, so weeping may in. Okay, I'm just, I'm. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy come in the morning. Something is about to occur. I want you to encourage somebody 
Say, in the morning. Uh, we go to Lamentations quickly. Lamentations 33, 22 to uh, 23. 22 says this. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Somebody say every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. In limitations, we yet find God's compassion. Let me say that again. I said in limitations, we yet find God's compassion. So I know that you're weeping right now, but even though you may be in a a state of weeping in some facet in your life, God's compassion is still available even in your anguish. We find compassion in limitations. Y'all all all right? Somebody say at the break. Oh, I'm going to move quickly. At the break, um, Isaiah 58 says this, um, and it's contextually dealing with God's choice of fasting. I got to put this thing together. It's dealing with God's choice of fasting. Now, I remind you that some things, some things cannot be cast out except by prayer and fasting. Some of us are frustrated spiritually because we've been praying for something to get out of our lives for a long time, but we won't take the necessary steps to get it out of our lives because we say, oh, fasting is passe. Oh, fasting is for the old church. We don't need to fast anymore. The spirit of the God, the word says right here, it says, some things, there's some things that you're stressing about and you like, I cannot seem to get rid of this stronghold in my life. And some things... Some things cannot be cast out except by. So you can do all that. You can pray all you want to. But you got to do another part of prayer. That means fasting. That's what it's like. Faith without works is dead. Sometimes you have to, you know, say faith without works is dead. So you have to have them both at the same time. Right. So to cast out some of these things and these issues that you're going through, you're going to have to fast and pray. That's the word. You can get upset with me all you want to. But you're going to have to fast and pray. But that's just a reminder. Let me get back on Taz here. Listen at this. God's choice of fasting is to loose the bands of wickedness, undo heavy burdens, free the oppressed, break every, I'm about to, ooh, Lord, help me. Break every yoke. Somebody say break every yoke. I don't know what your situation is, but here it is when God writes that blank check that we like to talk about. God says, whatever your problem is, this is what you need to do to get rid of it. I'm telling you, for some of these things that are in your life, for you to get rid of it, you're going to have to fast and you're going to have to. This is the type of fasting that I'm talking about. Hold on. Didn't you just say that weeping may endure for a night, but joy come in the morning? Didn't you just say? That, 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 that his mercies are new every morning and now you want to talk about fasting? Mm-hmm, I sure do. Loose the bands of wickedness. Undo heavy burdens. Free the oppressed. Break every yoke. Feed the hungry. Isn't that interesting? Your fast is to feed somebody. Never mind. Clothe the naked. Verse 8 says, then, somebody say then. It says, then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Hmm. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine help shall spring forth speedily. I didn't make this up. It's right there in your word. It said, then thy light shall break forth as the morning, and thine help shall spring forth speedily. I've been going through this condition for a long time. When the last time that you did this kind of fast? I'm just going to look back down at the text and keep going. Because I don't want nobody to think I'm talking about them. I'm talking about all y'all and me too. <laughs> Amen. It says speedily. Somebody say speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Uh, stop right there. Let me work with that real quick. The glory of the Lord shall be your reward. I wonder what we're willing to put ourselves through. Just for God to get the glory. We want the glory. We want the accolades. We want the affirmation. We want the attention. But what would you go through so that God can get the glory? Because the glory of the Lord is my reward. 
That's when you know you're really pleasing God when you're doing it for his glory and not your notoriety. That's when you know that you got good motives and you got pure motives when you're saying, this ain't about me. This ain't about what I want. This ain't about what I desire. This is how I see it. This is for the glory. Somebody say, I'm doing it for the glory. You got to get that thing registered down in your sister. Say, I'm doing it for the glory. I might have to hobble alone, but I'm doing it for the glory. I might have to go through this sickness and anguish and stress, but I'm doing it for the glory. Because if my, if my condition brings somebody closer to God, then I ought to give him praise. I ought to give him praise because, again, you know, we like to give the testimony after he's delivered us, but he's delivering us the whole time. you got to, sometimes we got to be an example while we're going through. See, you waiting to get perfect before you start your ministry, and your ministry was really already in the process of your struggle. I said, sometimes you're ready to get to the end of your, the end of your struggle so that you can start ministry, and your ministry started the minute that you hit struggle. God, somebody help me here. I said, your ministry hit the minute you you started struggling that's when God was really ready to work with you it wasn't until the enemies the many times enemies came against Israel before people saw God move it wasn't because see people wasn't praising God like they should have been in Joseph's time we we got in the grain and now we done made you know said so we done made a come up I was talking to somebody about this. I was like, I was like, sometimes we focus on that whole thing and there's a drought coming and I'm good with that. I'm fine with that. The drought don't bother me. The drought, say the drought don't bother me. When you, when you start speaking prophetic word that's harsh to some people, me, I start getting glad. You understand what I'm saying? Because every warning, every warning, every warning is setting me up for prosperity. I need y'all to catch that. I said every warning is setting me up for prosperity. I would that the church really caught that. I said every warning. Say every warning. Every warning is setting me up for prosperity. Check this out. He said the drought's coming, right? It's going to be seven years of plenty, and then it's going to be seven years of drought. Now, half the church will celebrate on the plenty, and the other half will worry about the drought. But see, those that are led by the Spirit of God will be celebrating the whole time. They'll be like, what? Drought? Okay. Plenty? Okay. It don't matter because the warning sets us up for prosperity. And the reason why I take this little time right here to say this is because, watch this, when everybody else was in drought because of what God had gave to Joseph, who had to go through a struggle himself, huh? he didn't start off in the palace, he started off in his father's favor. Y'all thought I was going to say the pit, then. No, he started off in his father's favor. Then he went to the field. But now he's on the other side of that. And he says, this thing is coming, but I don't want y'all to be worried because I got a plan. Because the prophetic gives me a plan. Doesn't it? I got a plan. So even though this is coming and again, this is, that, this, is that, um, this is that absolute prosperity that I've talked about. Absolute prosperity cannot be revoked, reversed, or changed. It's going to happen. So it's going to happen. So when they said the drought was coming, the plenty was coming, the plenty was coming, there wasn't nothing that could be done about it. When the drought was coming, the drought was coming, and nothing could be done about it. But in the drought, it said, said no, no, God, get us out of this drought. You should have been preparing when he gave you plenty. But that should have set you up because while you were setting up, everybody else was eating up the plenty. And I'm telling you, sometimes coming when people are going to eat up this plenty because it's about to be plenty. I know you think you're worried. Mm -mm, it's going to be plenty. For now. For now. Right? There was, I, I don't want to get practical with you. In the bubble, there was plenty. In the crash, there was drought. But if you would have knew when to get in the bubble and when to get out, then you would have been all right. You wouldn't have worried about it. If, even in the, in the 1920s, I know this is a little bit of history. I'm going to come back to the thing. Even in the 1920s, it was people still balling. Some of the most luxurious pictures you'll see is like, you'll see them people that was out there, and I'm not, make, I'm not callous about that. You'll see the Great Depression, but you'll also see great wealth. Why is that? Now, if the world can do it, why can't the kingdom? Y'all worried about a drought. I, I'm celebrating that joke or whatever because I should be getting prepared now. So the warning comes so that we can be prosperous in the time of drought. Because Israel was not affected by the drought. They were coming to Israel to get, to get it, right? So since they had to come to the only ones who had it, they got wealthy. Anyway, that was a side note. Let me get back on task. I just, I just, I just have to get back on this. But then 
Shut up, like when you do all this stuff that I, but that I actually do, because when you do that, when Joseph did that, he was doing it for the glory of God. He wasn't doing it so that they can have his name, so that his name could live forever. So that he could leave behind a legacy. That wasn't why he was doing it. He was doing it for the glory of God. But then there came a time where there was a king that didn't know Joseph. It's going to come a time when people don't know the people of God. When the world don't know the people of God. The Bible even says that, the, that, 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 that all the creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. Waiting. Anyway. But. It began to dawn. Let the church say it began to dawn. I got to put one more piece of this and then I'm going to wrap it up like a bow real nice. Watch this. Matthew 28 says that when Mary Mary, y'all know the original Mary Mary, uh, they came to the tomb, the sepulcher, the sepulcher. I know you want to get fancy with it. The sepulcher. And they came to the sepulcher. And they came to the sepulcher looking for something. They were looking for where they had put the body of Christ. Some of y'all catch that. They came to the sepulcher looking for the body of Christ. And an angel descended from heaven. And the text tells us that there was an earthquake. So something began to shift just because the angel moved down, because the angel had a message to tell these people who were waiting, they had waited till the morning so that they could see a dead place. They were waiting. <laughs> they had been weeping. All, never mind. <laughs> they had been weeping all night. They didn't realize that joy was going to happen in the morning. They just expected to find the body of Christ in a dead place. And there's some people that are right now looking to find the body. I know this ain't Passover. I just, I just had it. There's some people still looking for the body of Christ in a dead place. And he's not there. Somebody say he's not there. Y'all got to excuse me because I wasn't saying all my life. I believe that angel said something like this. Mary, Mary, why are you bugging? Why are you bugging? The ground shook. And he said, come see. Come see the place where he lay. He's not there. Say he's not there. Hmm. Text tells us something a little later in that same text. It says that the Sabbath had ended and it began to dawn on the first day of the week. Let's say it began to dawn. Y'all all right so far? Yeah. Follow me here in the morning. At the break, it began to dawn. Now, receive this. I like to believe, and I know for the truth, that all the Bible is written to go together. And it's written so that we will understand that the fullness of God and His entirety. But when I came across this text and I said, uh, We've been made endure for a night, joy cometh in the morning. Oh, okay. So I find mercy. New every morning, and my light can shine forth as the morning if I do the type of fast that you call for, that I can break every yoke on my life by doing what you say, and it can break in, it, it can happen in like, like the light in the morning if I just follow your instructions. And then I realize that I need to stop looking for the body of Christ in a dead. Mm -hmm. I need to stop looking for a body. So, so I realized these three things and I said, okay, well, that's in Psalms 1, that's in Psalms 30, 1 through 5. And, and if you allow me a little liberty here, I think that somehow through the divine majesty of God, that verse 6 really came 100 Psalms later. Now, that's just me. I believe that verse 6 spiritually comes Somehow comes a hundred psalms later. Verse 6 
of the 130 Psalms, I can't make this stuff up. Of the 130 Psalms, it says, My soul waiteth for the Lord more. Somebody say more. My soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Church, we got to recognize that God, thou has lifted me up. Thou has healed me. Thou has kept me alive. Thou has given me instructions to break every yoke. Thou are not in a dead place. You're not in a place where the dead lay. The saints of God, I'm here to wreck your timeline. Because it's never been about a moment. It's never been about the morning. It's always been about the master. And we've been waiting for time when we should have been waiting for him. Because you thought morning was when the sun rose. But morning is when you recognize that the sun rose. No, 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 no. See, you, we waiting for the morning because that's when the day begins. We want the light to hit so we can get our morning started. But see, sometimes your morning got to start at midnight. Sometimes your morning got to start when it's the darkest that you've ever seen because it seems dark. But it shouldn't seem dark around you because you should let your light shine so before men. That men will see your good works, you know. See your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven, because I'm doing it for the glory of the Lord in the first place. So if I'm a weep, I'm only going to weep for a little while because I know as soon as I recognize that the body of Christ ain't in a dead place. Y'all need to catch that two times. I said that the body of Christ ain't in a dead place. See, the problem is we keep want to go back to the old time ways. I don't want to go back because he ain't back there. Never mind. You want to look to I need y'all to say this. Y'all want to say something crazy with me? Say all the yesters. That's yesterday, that's yesterday night, that's yesterday eve, that's yesterday year. All the yesters are dead. All the yesters are dead. And we keep looking for him in a dead place. If I would have just did this yesterday, you can't do nothing about yesterday. You're crying over last night because you haven't realized that it's morning time you've been in morning because you haven't realized that it's morning <laughs> verse 6 of 130 says my I wait my soul waits for the Lord Say my soul. my soul. That's the seat of everything. That's the seat of everything. That's the seat of everything. That's the seat of my heart. That's the seat of my mind. That is the seat of my spirit. Everything is in my soul. It says my soul waited for the Lord more than they that wait for the morning. My question, if I could ask one this morning is, what you waiting for? Some of us are waiting for next year. Y'all know it was coming. And I put a post out. I said, if you're waiting for 2018, you are wasting your time. Some gyms all over this country are going to be packed Tuesday morning because ain't nobody going to work on Monday or very few people going to work on Monday. Come Tuesday morning. You know it too, bro. Y'all know it. Don't go to the gym on the first week of the year. If you want to get on any machine, you know why? Because everybody's resolution was next year, I'm going to get in shape. Next time I'm going to do this. If I could just get past this dark period where I gained all this weight. If I could just get past this dark period when I got in all this debt. If I could just get past this dark period when I was procrastinating and waiting to do. If I could just get past all that, then. Then I could begin. Then I could start. But I came to give you a message this morning. And the message entitlement is simply this. It's about to dawn on you. 
No, no, I need y'all to catch that in your spirit. It's about to dawn on you. <laughs> you when you catch it, it'll dawn on you. Never mind. I'm saying one more time. I say, when you catch it, it'll dawn on you. You'll start recognizing that, hold on, wait a minute. All I ever needed was for God to be there and I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And since he is Yahweh Shema, meaning the Lord who is there, he's always there. You don't have to wait on anything else but God. I don't want you to wait another moment. Because it's never been about the moment. It's always been about the master. And we've made things too much on moments. I'm even talking about the feast. If you're waiting on the feast for something to happen, you are wasting your time. If you're waiting on New Year's, you're waiting on, you're wasting your time. What am I waiting on? I move at the command of the master. If the master says wait, that's when you catch me waiting. If it ain't the master saying to wait, then I'm going. Period and point blank. Stop looking for the master in a dead place, church. Stop looking for God in your failures. Stop looking for God in your disobedience. Hold on. Stop looking for God in your past accomplishments. Well, you know I've done my fair share. Huh? He said, I would that you be faithful even unto death. My faithfulness isn't relegated to a time. My faithfulness is married to God. Is married to the husbandman. Is married to the bridegroom. That's what my faith is attached to. So I don't have to wait on a moment. I'm just waiting on the master. I want to wreck somebody's timeline this morning. I know you've been waiting. I know you've heard other messages before telling you to go. But if you don't get it no other time, you need to really get this. The moment for you to go was the moment that you hit struggle. That was the moment that you were supposed to be going in the first place. But you let struggle halt you. You let weeping stop you. You turn weeping into a flood. We turn weeping into a flood that we thought that the waters had to recede so that we can walk on dry land. God is saying, don't you even know, even when I did float it, there was still people pursuing purpose in an ark. So if your tears done got us so much where it's flooding, you go ahead, build an ark, and go ahead, get over the purpose. Hell, hello, somebody. I've been crying all night long. Well, go ahead, build your ark. Get up in that joker, you and your family, and your flood of tears, and go ahead, get to where God is telling you to do a new thing. Hello, somebody. <laughs> We've been happy, but then, Weeping happens, but then I remember his holiness. Nothing else has to happen in my life because we're always waiting on something else to happen. Always. Always waiting on something else to happen. But all I have to do is remember his holiness. Because see, the thing about this is when I remember, you say, hold on, pastor. But when I remember, don't I have to go back a little bit? No, 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 no. See, when you remember his holiness, you're stepping into eternity. Never mind. You got to understand where I'm coming from. See, when you remember his holiness, you're stepping in. Never mind. When you remember. Okay. When you remember his holiness, you're stepping into eternity. You just tipped. Say, I just tiptoed into eternity. Because I remembered his holiness. His holiness is eternal. His holiness don't shut off. His holiness didn't go to sleep while you was weeping. You understand what I'm telling you? So when you remember his holiness, you're not thinking about the past. You're processing eternity. 
You want to know what you want to know what eternity feels like? Start thinking about His holiness. I wonder how eternity is going to be. Just remember His holiness. Ain't nothing happening right now, but I remember His holiness because I got to understand the way God works is that He snapped, He took time and created it and put me into it because He knew the end of it. So if I'm waiting on Him, then that means that I'm that means that I'm waiting on eternity. Not I'm waiting forever. Never mind. I said I'm waiting on eternity. I'm not waiting forever. No, somebody get that. It's about to dawn on you. I said, I said I'm not waiting forever. I'm waiting on eternity. And if you really want to really, really mess with it, I'm waiting on eternity, which means I'm serving it if I'm waiting on it. Never mind. If you're waiting on it, you're serving it. I'm serving it. See, we always think of wait as something that we're just in this sad place where we just want something. No, no, no. Serve him in the wait. And serve him in the wait. And then serve him in the wait. Never mind. I said serve him in the wait while you're waiting. Serving him in the wait when it's heavy on you. And then serve him while you're waiting for things to turn around. Does that make sense? To anybody, say it's about to dawn on you. Are you getting this yet? Yes, it's gone. In order for us to die to it. Because, see, the yester is already gone. Y'all realize that, right? You won't get five minutes to go back. You won't get it back. I won't get back what I just said, get back. You understand what I'm saying? I know it's weird, but it's just, just true about it. Say, I'm not getting that back. You're not getting that back. So all the yesters are gone. But we haven't died to it. Do you understand? We haven't died to it. We haven't let it go. And some people be like, I just can't let it go. That means that you as a rational thinking human being have decided to hold on to what is no longer here. I know it's difficult. Well, it's more complicated than that. You don't feel like how I feel. You ain't living how I live. I'm telling you the truth about it is that no matter how much you keep trying to revisit that place, that place is gone. Well, it's in my mind. Well, it's in your mind because you keep choosing to let it be in your mind. He said, let this mind be in you, the one that's also in Christ Jesus. What happened to letting that mind be in you? You letting a dead mind be in you. I said, let the mind. Never mind. I didn't say it wouldn't hurt. I didn't say it wouldn't come up again. But you know what I'm saying? We act like when we act like when stuff come up that we can't put it back down. You had the power to bring it up, then you had the power to put it back down. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, put it back down. What has happened when you go to a store and your child pick up something you don't want them to have? You say, put it. Never mind. See, some of us have been in the store trying to pick stuff up and God is slapping you on your hand like, put it back down. I didn't tell you. I didn't want you to have it in the first place. I know you want the sweets. I know you want all the good stuff. We eating some vegetables today. Put it back down. And we just like them children in the grocery store. We throwing tantrums and fits. And, oh, I want it. Oh, I want it. And no, he going to leave the store with you pouting right there. If you want to go with me, you're going to have to leave up out the store without that thing that you keep crying about. Never mind. I said, if you want to leave with me. Hmm? If you want to leave with me, if you want to go where I'm going, you're going to have to leave that thing that you keep crying about. Let me say it one more time. If you want to go with God on something, when God is calling us, sometimes he said, when, when he told Abraham, let's just use that because it's easy, right? He said, Abraham, if you want what I have for you, you're going to have to leave your father. So some of the things that we're crying about, God is saying, you're going to have to leave that behind. You can pat all you want to. Somebody say, put that down. Put that down. Put that down. Put that down. I don't want you to have that. Put it down. You didn't need it in the first place. Put it down. I told you not to get it. Put it down. But some of us are real, real slick children. Some of us, some of, some of us, we ain't going to leave without it. We ain't going to leave without it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that he don't see that we still got it. He don't see that I got it. I show him. You go in your room, you playing with it. All of a sudden, he come in. Eh? 
What you doing with that? I know I didn't get that for you. Where did you get that from? You had to have stole it because I didn't get it for you. If he didn't get it for you, you just stole. Never mind. Some of us have stolen relationships. I'm going to get out of here. I'm, I know I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> You're wondering why it's not working for you. He said, I didn't want you to have it in the first place. I, t- I told you to put it down. That's why you weeping all night because you stole something. But that's only going to endure. That's only going. That's only going to last for. It's only going to last until you realize. It only going to endure. It's only going to endure until you realize that joy coming in the morning. But I'm not waiting for the sun to rise. I'm ready to recognize that the sun is rose. I'm willing to recognize that God ain't in the dead place. God ain't in the place. Uh, God is not in the place of things that I, uh, that, that, that I shouldn't have had. The, the yesters that I, I want to go back to, he's not there. He's not there. He's not there in the place where I was like, oh, God. God, I know they must have took you out of here. I wonder how Mary Mary felt. They, they, must, have, they must have killed our Savior. Let's go see the place where he lay and then there's an earthquake. And the other part of that earthquake that makes me think about it, too, is because this is another place where God has to, you know, probably do another resurrection kind of thing, is that it says the gods fell back like dead men. The gods, you know, you know why they fell back like dead men? Because when God really wants you to see something, he'll cancel out everything. He'll cancel out everything so that you get the message. I want you to cancel out everything in your mind so that you get in this message. It's some stuff dropping dead right now. You got to leave it where it lay. Because he ain't there. The angel told you. He ain't there. So I want you to go run, tell everybody you know. Because that's what they did, didn't they? Uh, he ain't there. Uh, this your next message. He ain't there. I know you keep looking for him in your past, but darling, he ain't there. I know you're looking for him in a dead place, but baby, he ain't there. But I don't see him working right now. Well, just, just remember his holiness. Just, just think about his holiness because I need you to tiptoe into eternity real quick. So the yesters are gone, but for us to die to it, we must transition through it because death is transition. Amen. We got to transition through it, overcome it, and rise from it. Let me say that again. In order for us to die to it, we must transition through it. So this time that we're waiting on or whatever have you, this thing, well, I can't wait until this time happens. Oh, just, it's going to be a brand new me in 2018. It was a brand new you in 2017, 16, 15, 14. And you ain't changed, and you ain't changed yet. You ain't changed yet. How come at the end of every year, at the end of every year, every year is the worst year you've ever been through? Every year and every time of the year you come to the same thing. This time is going to be different. You know why this time ain't going to be different? Because your priorities are out of order. You're waiting for the ball to drop. Well, you drop the ball. They dropped the ball. I don't know. And any other thing when you drop the ball, it's, a, it's an incompletion, right? It's a turnover, right? Huh? Y'all want a turnover? That's what you want? No. I'm waiting on him more than the morning. It's never about a moment. It's about the master. If I would just concentrate my mind on him, if I would just say, God, whatever it is you want me to do, I'm going to move when you want me to do. So if you're telling me to wait, then I'll wait. But if you're telling me to move, then I'll move. I ain't going to try and think about what I don't got, what I, what I don't want, how uncomfortable it is for me. God is the type of God that will send you to create a mega ministry in the desert and then behead you. That's the kind of God we serve. I know y'all don't like that God. Y'all don't like that God. Y'all like the cotton candy God that you just get all your riches and you ball out for life and you don't ever have to go. That's the kind of God we like. And sometimes he'll do that. Sometimes. 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 Right? We want a sugar daddy. Let me stop. I got to get back on message. On a sugar daddy. 
but weeping may endure for now. I know a lot of there's a lot of struggle. There's a lot of uh, what's going to happen. I'm telling you, we're coming into a time where most likely a lot of things are going to go up. There's going to be a lot of wealth. There's going to be a lot of uh, prosperity. There's going to be a lot of things that are out there for you to get. Amen. Amen. Uh, the market uh, volume wise is high as it's ever been. And we talking about something we struggling. That's because you can't recognize the time. So if you can't, if you can't get increased in the time of increase, what in the world are you going to do when it actually do pop? What you going to do when it actually is drought? If you can't recognize that there's prosperity right now in this kind of climate, I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you, you need to refix your eyes. Huh? But oh, the way things are going, I understand the way things are going. I ain't blind, but you ought to be prepared so that you can prosper. Hello? But yes, it's a goal. We got to overcome this stuff. Let us dedicate the place we're about to live, extolling God, realizing that God has kept us alive to live in a completely new place. I'm not worried about whatever happened yesterday, whenever. So all that rejection you faced in your yester, leave it back there. It's in a dead place. Stop fetching dead stuff. Hmm? Stop crying over spilled milk, so to speak. Huh? That was supposed to be in the night. And you still weeping, talking about something I love the Lord. You, you, you weeping, talking about something I love the Lord. Weeping now. Weeping. Flooding the whole scene. Upset. Ain't nothing going right. You can't wait for 2018. 2018 going to say it had the same ups and downs as 17 had. Hmm? I say this to people all the time. I'm almost such a way. I say this to people all the time. They say, how you doing? I say, good. I say, always good. And if it's not good, I make it good. Lady at the register said, you a smooth talker. I said, no, I ain't no smooth talker. This is actually what I believe. She said, I think you get all the girls. I said, ladies, calm down. I got one wife, and that's the only one I want. Make it play, son. Make it play. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I wish I almost wish I had this word to say to her then, you know what I'm saying? I would have been like, put that down. <laughs> it's not yours. It's not yours. It's not yours. Put that down. <laughs> no, I'm not going home with you. No, 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 no. Anyway. <laughs> but do you get what I'm saying? Simple. Ain't real complex. But something that can to destroy because some of us have been waiting and waiting and waiting. You're ready to get. You're waiting for a man. You're waiting for a woman. You're waiting for you're waiting for a job. You're waiting for more money. You're waiting for you're waiting for confirmation. Still, if y'all waiting for confirmation, I'm just saying, just go. You know, say I'm gonna tell you. Remember His Holiness. Go back and get that message. <laughs> it's confirmation enough. You know, you're still waiting on that, and you're saying when this happens. I came to cancel your when this happens. Hmm? I can do all things through the one who rose. And every time I try to look for him in a dead place, I will never find him there. Hmm? Happy New Year. Happy New Day. Happy New Time. Why? Not because the clock is moving. But because my mind is moving towards God, my mind is saying, you know what, God, I realize that you've always been there. And I just got to think about your holiness when I think of the goodness of Yeshua, Jesus, and all that he's done for me, I tiptoe into eternity. And then I say, my soul cries out. It's about to dawn on me. Give God praise all over this place. Mm